All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to this quick email that was sent from a subscriber. This one, my guy, sounds like he's probably mid to late 50s at this point. Single, never been married, on his own, and happy. And he shares a story about events that happened back in the 90s. So we're looking probably about 25 to, 25 to 30 years ago, whatever, something like that about this gal that he got involved with that during those days he was very much very nice guy blue pill because he was raised by a single MOM who raised him to be the perfect gentleman he got involved with this gal who was 10 years older than him 38 years old at the time and of course drama 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 and you're going to see in the story how as time goes on he gains more of a spine and putting her in her place and all that and eventually how she pulls his tactic trying to get him to marry her and have everything on her terms without a care in the world about what he wanted, how he felt, and all that. And you're going to see how he whoosh, kicks her to the curb. And it's wonderful. And to no surprise, later on down the road, take a wild guess where his life is right now and where her life is. And as you can imagine, his life's going great and hers not so much. That will be a pretty entertaining one to go over here, guys, just to show you. For you guys out there that perhaps were raised by a single MOM to be the perfect gentleman because probably your single MOM, your mom was, you know, chose the wrong guys, if you will, whether it was willingly or not, and she's going to make the world a better place by raising you to be a perfect gentleman, and you've been hurt badly and taken advantage of because you were programmed to be that way, or your dad was a pushover and a total wimp, and, you know, you can, over time, by gaining knowledge and learning from people that have real experience... In trial and practice, you can break the bad programming. It will take time, and as you'll see in this story, this guy here, it does take time, but it will get better and better and better. And so for you relationship guys that do want relationships, but you know darn well you need to work on yourself so you're not taking advantage again, here's an example of just that. It can be done, but it ain't going to happen overnight. A lot of you guys that think that, oh, I just have to watch a few of SSM's videos, and I'm good to go. No, because... That bad programming will take over, guaranteed, until you've had years really learning, hearing these stories, putting it into practice, and all that. You can get where you want to be, but it's going to take time. And you'll see, eventually, you'll be in a good place just like this guy. So I think you'll definitely enjoy this. He says, hey, SSM, I love your content for years and listen to a ton of experiences, and I figure it's about time I contribute mine. My name is Gary, fake name, of course. I was a classic nice guy raised by a single MOM. She wanted me to treat women as beautiful mysteries, and he says in parentheses, they're manipulative narcissists, mystery solved. <laughs> yeah, how many times I've heard that the single MOMs, and I have to say single MOM because YouTube's ridiculous, and you all know why, that have been burned by the, bo the bad boys and everything, so they're going to raise their sons to be these perfect gentlemen. And what happens? These perfect gentlemen who don't know any better are eaten alive. This is why the young guys need a male role model who knows what he's talking about. Anyway, I paid for that being used by the gals like a toilet brush being used right after a clogged dump. Uh, this this event was years ago and I'm a different guy now that's done dating for the sweet bliss of, of peaceful existence and accomplishing goals with, with a, without roadblocks and high heels. Now on to my story. I was 28 at the time and it was in the 1990s. I went to a party and everyone was dancing and having a good time. There was a shy woman on the couch, we'll call her Anne, fake name of course, and she was 38 years old. So you're 28 and she's 38. You're really going for the low hanging fruit here. I approached her to see if she, why she was so sad and not having a good time. Smack! Already a white knight, or you're going for the low hanging fruit. I hope she is good looking. I'm assuming she was. You want to get that girl sitting around pouting on the couch where everybody else is having fun? That's not going to go well. She was very friendly, and after making her laugh, I got her to get up and start dancing. Days later, I found out that she was asking about me, so I asked her for her phone number. I called her, and we went to the movies for our first date. That's the worst idea for a first date. How do you get to know someone in a dark theater? He says, bad choice for a first date to get to know a chick, but I was far more stupid back then, what I just said. Coffee, tea, beer, wine, uh, 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 ice cream cone walking through the park. Whatever. Keep them cheap. I went to hold her hand during the movie and she moved it away quickly. Oh, okay. He says, red flag. A matter of fact, she wasn't affectionate at all. We went on a couple more dates and it was the same thing. Smack! 
first date you have, she likes you enough to go out with you, and you hold her hand, she like shoves it away. So I'm gonna guess you didn't. She never kissed you or whatever on the end of the first date. I never would. I would. I never would have gone on a second or third date after that. If they're not showing some kind of affection in some capacity on the first date, physically showing they like, don't waste your time. Uh, no affection, no touching. Even my blue pill brain registered that this wasn't going to go anywhere, so I've called and broke it off with her. Good. At least in that moment, you were using the proper head. A couple weeks later, she said she wanted to come over and see me. I'd be like, nah. She came over, and it was a complete 180. She was on my lap, kissing and hugging me. She goes from like not letting you touch your hand in the theater to shoving it away to all of a sudden riding you like, like a stripper giving you a lap dance. She said she talked to her sisters, and they convinced her that I was a good guy and to give me a solid chance. And he says, more like, you're 38, and you got a 28-year-old willing to date you. Rope him in, moron. Yeah, pretty much. That's what they're thinking. They're thinking, wait a second. The first date, you shoved his hand away, and he still went out on a second date with you? And then nothing happened, and he went out on a third date with you? Oh, okay. Now, he did break up with you after the third date, but still, I think you can rope him in. That's what they probably told her. And they're probably like, you're 38. You need to get a husband. After we started dating regularly, and the affection kept going up, but so did the red flags. Here's a couple with the grand finale at the end. Number one. When we would go on a date, I'd offer to pay. She got offended saying that she, a grown woman, can pay for herself. <laughs> One of those, huh? Then on the next day, I, would, I wouldn't offer and she would be like, aren't you going to pay for dinner? I had enough and, and I had to, had to school this chick. Drama, drama, drama. Dude, we, I know you said back in the day you were the nice guy type and your mom didn't help you raising you to be this way, but God almighty. Drama, drama, drama. There's a reason she's 38 and there's no guy in her life. We went on a double date once. The bill came and she was doing her usual BS. This time it was the pay for the meal one. I told her, don't worry, there's an ATM just outside to pay for your part of the meal. She was trying to hold in the daggers in her eyes. I bet she was. Then as we were going to the car, she says to me, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Okay, mom. We all share a car, and she was being dropped off first. I told the couple with us, uh, park for a second, I'll, I'll be right back. She looks back at me puzzled and says, I told you we are going to talk about this tomorrow. And I told her, move your ass, we're talking now. There you go, bro, lay down the law. I told her I did what I did because of the stupid manipulation crap that she was pulling. Because I laid down the law, she apologized, kissed me, and told me it would never happen again. He says here in parentheses, current Gary would have broken up with her right then and there, but there's still some blue pill in past Gary. Well, current Gary wouldn't have gotten involved with her in the first place. Current Gary wouldn't even talk to her when she's on the couch. But anyhow, yes, you were improving slowly. I like how you mentioned that, how he laid down the law. He didn't put up with her BS, and all of a sudden, boom. She's apologizing, kissing, it'll never happen again. That's what happens when they pull their shit and you act like a man, stand up for yourself. Number two, she kept on making comparisons between me and some other guy named Winston. Winston has a better job, she says. Winston does this, Winston does that. I asked her, I'd like to meet this Winston, and if he's so great, let's break up so she could be with Winston. She begged me not to break up and apologized again. I still think Winston is fake. Guys, if a chick makes comparisons like this, end it. They will always beg, and that should, not, that should be the last thing you hear from her again. Yeah, exactly. They're comparing you to other guys, make deliberately making you feel like crap you know it's like okay number one why aren't you with this Winston character if he is in fact real and two clearly Winston doesn't want to be with you and remember you're 38 I found you sitting there on the couch look pouting number three now the grand finale we were watching Little House on the Prairie why but okay Maybe nothing else was on television in 1995, and it was only Little House on the Prairie. Maybe you like Michael Landon. I don't know. Uh, he says, Sweet Lord, chicks, if you're going to try this BS, at least put on something to make the dude horny. And she dropped her Hail Mary long bomb. She knew a retired couple, and she said she wanted that life for herself. I asked her, what do you mean? Uh, here we go, boys, and the 4% ladies watching this. She says, I want us to get married, and I want a baby in the first year of our marriage. She said, I want to stop working to take care of our child. 
She said, I want us to move away so I can go back to my hometown where my family lives. Uh, her sisters weren't married and she had a military dad, most likely to keep me in line. So, with all this stuff that she says she wants, me, 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 where is you, 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 you? Her perception of you is that you're, even though you've checked her here and there, that you'll still cave. I asked her to sleep on it and let me know she still wanted it in the morning. The next morning, I called her and asked her if she still wanted what she said the last night, and she said, definitely yes. I told her, well, it looks like we definitely got to break up now. <laughs> she was shocked. I told her that wasn't the life that I wanted to have and that we are no longer compatible. Good for you, bro. A lot of guys, because they can't be alone or no girls ever paid attention to them or whatever, would have just caved because, you know, they're out of fearful of her breaking up with them. Or clearly you can see you've been shedding the nice guy the, ways the way your mom programmed you to be. Good for you. She was shocked. I told her that wasn't the life I wanted to have and that we are no longer compatible. I also said I don't want to be, I didn't want to be me. The, let me, let me, bear with me. He wrote this a little weird. I also said I didn't want to be me. To, oh, fuck it. I can't read this right because I'll proofread in the future, guys. Basically, he didn't want to be the one that has to do all this shit and, uh, and having to work, to work to his death to, make, to give her the light that she wanted. Okay, fine. We ended things amicably and we, both, we were both invited to a party. She said she wanted to get back together. And my blue pill horny ass said, sure. Smack. Why the hell did you get back with her? You're breaking up. You think she's changed? You think what she wanted changed? You just communicate to her. She can pull her bullshit and you'll still take her back. She always had an amazing rack and she dressed up to show it. Hoping the blood would escape my brain and we'd be rolling around like in the bed like rabbits with us getting back together. That was not happening and there was definitely a hint of disappointment that I couldn't take the bait. During the party, she asked if we go on a walk, and then after a small catch-up, she turns to me and says, Gary, why did you really break up with me? I told her, let me ask you a question. This life you had in mind, was my happiness in the marriage even thought of or considered? She looked shocked, then looked at the ground and said, no, no it wasn't. I told her, that's why we broke up. See? And remember guys, again... He met her when she's 38. If she was good looking, he said she has a good rack and she looked good when she dressed up and she was pretty enough. What happened? To, why wasn't she wanting all that when she was younger? I'll tell you why. Because no doubt when she was younger, she was on again, off again on the carousel. And those types of guys she really wanted wouldn't work, so she was alone in her late 30s looking sad on the couch, waiting for the nice guy to swoop in and be the white knight and she can make demands. Uh, that's what I'd wager. Now, as an update, he says, years later, I bumped into Ann and we briefly caught up on the street. He says, no, not getting together for coffee. Ann, met, Ann managed to find some Barney Rubble from the Flintstones looking guy to give her what she wanted, or so she thought. They moved back to her hometown, but due to her age and him, they couldn't conceive. They ended up having to move back here and she had to work. Then they got divorced. She went through a serious illness and now is living alone. I have a great life in IT. I even got the chance to start my own podcast and pitched a TV show to a major network. Bro, that's awesome. Thanks for reading my story, SSM, and hopefully this one helps guys out there. I may not date anymore, but I'm with you with you boys in the struggle to create the best life for yourselves. It can be done. A freaking men. We live in an imperfect world, and so there's no perfect scenario of, of, of failure. Go out there and get it. You're darn right. Well, man, I'm really glad to hear that you were able over time to shake off that bad programming thanks to your mom. And I'm willing to bet you your mom probably thought she, what she was doing was the right thing. I'm willing to bet you. Because yeah, a lot of times it isn't malicious. It's just say like women don't really understand, you know, what they respond to in the emotions department. They don't get why they feel what, what they do. Why I mean, some do, but a lot don't. It's amazing to me. But anyhow, I'm glad over time you are able to shake it off. This goes to show you guys, a lot of guys wonder how can I break free of the bad programming. How can I, you know, they, they, I had a guy write me in recently asking about that and I'm still going to do his Ask SSM letter about that. If he's watching, I'm, I'm going to do it. And it really just takes time, guys. It takes you knowing this information I talk about, repeatedly hearing these things, looking out for the things I talk about. Stop watching those stupid ass movies that brainwash you and all that. Stop hanging around other guy, nice guy types, other guys that are 
weak pushovers that get pushed around by their gals. Stop hanging around them because that's going to affect you. Stop taking advice about women that give you the wrong advice. Those are the types of things that help deprogram. And it's also just time. And over time, you'll become more and more hardened, if you will, through your experiences. And you'll go from being how this guy was initially in the store in the beginning to how he is now where there's no marriage, there's no relationships. He's doing his own thing and he's happy. And so I say good for him. I really do wish him well. All right, guys, that is it for today. It was a quick one, but I thought you guys would enjoy this little story here. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Also, let this guy know what you think. And guys, again, as always, you've got a great story you want to share to me, share with me, whether it's something that happened to you last week or 50 years ago if you're <laughs> that old. Great. Send it my way because I love these stories. And, and also, if you're in another part of the world. I love stories getting from dude because I like to hear about what's going on on the other side of the world because it's interesting because it's the same shit, right? It's amazing to me. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.